Welcome to today's broadcast, you mighty earth-shaking, history-making, mountain-moving, giant-killing, demon-stomping, water-walking champion. God is with you. God is for you. God is your defense. You cannot go under for going over. He's making a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert for you. Jesus is Lord. Listen, it's uh, Thankful Thursday. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry, and let's get energized on the Word of God. I want to start with two scripture cards, five verses. Leviticus 26, 9, for I will have respect unto you. I think I read that. Make you fruitful, multiply you, establish my covenant with you. I read that the other day. Let me get a new card. Genesis 12, 2 and 3, I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing Wow, that's what God told Abraham and Galatians 3 and Romans 4, particularly Romans 4, tells you that the blessing of Abraham is yours. Galatians 3.13 says that Christ redeemed you from the curse of the law so that the blessing of Abraham can come upon you. And Abraham was very rich in silver and cattle and gold uh, and He was a blessing to others. God told him, I'll bless you. I'll make your name great and you'll be a blessing. God wants to bless you. Make your name great so that when people hear your name, they smile because you're you're such a blessing and you shall be a blessing. He goes on to say in verse three, and I will bless those who bless you and curse him that curses you. All right. Isaiah 62 verse three in the Amplified Bible. I found this and I want to share it with you. I put it on the scripture card. You shall also be so beautiful and prosperous as to be thought of as a crown of glory and honor in the hand of the Lord. Wow. You're going to be so beautiful and prosperous that you're going to be thought of as a crown of glory and honor in the hand of the Lord. I think that God's not going to use a a Burger King crown. I don't think he's going to use a Queen of England crown. I think he has a crown that's that's super califragilistic, expialidociously amazing, and that's who God's making you to be. He's comparing you to a fine piece of jewelry. The Amplified Bible, Isaiah sixty-two three. All right, I got to keep going. Galatians uh, th- six seven. It's talking about uh, giving and receiving. Okay, and so anytime you think of giving. You've got to think of receiving also, because giving and receiving go together like salt and pepper, soup and sandwich. Uh, Who else? I don't know. Be not deceived. And in context, it's talking about giving and receiving from God, but to promote the gospel. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. And verse 9 says, and let us not be weary in well-doing in giving. Maybe you're giving of your time. Maybe you're giving of your talent and your ability. Maybe you're giving of your patience to somebody. Maybe you're giving of your money uh, to promote the gospel. Whatever it is, don't be weary in doing it, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So don't faint. Your due season is coming. Now, the resurrection of Jesus and him sitting down at the Father's right hand confirmed that substitution, that his sacrifice, his suffering, his death, his defeating Satan, his pouring out his blood on earth and on the heavenly articles of worship in heaven accomplished his mission. The Bible says in Hebrews 1, 3, King James, when he, meaning Jesus, had by himself purged our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Now, the Old Testament church, when God told uh, Moses to build a tabernacle on the earth that represented what he saw in heaven, the, the verse says this, For see, saith he, this is God talking, that you make all things according to the pattern that was shown thee in heaven. So Moses had an assignment, not only to bring the Ten Commandments, but to build a tabernacle that looked as identical as it could in the physical realm on earth, just like how the worship is in heaven. And that's kind of mind-blowing because you wouldn't think there would be worship and that type of stuff in heaven. 
But when Moses built the had the tabernacle in the wilderness built, there was no chairs, no seats, no place to set down for the priests because the priest's job was never finished, the physical priests. But when Jesus, our high priest, finished the work, he sat down. There's nothing more that can be done to, to supernaturally wipe your sins away and make you right with the Father. There's no, nothing else can be done. Not even you being a, such a goody-goody. Not, you, not even you modifying your behavior can make you more right with God than what Jesus did. The mission of Jesus accomplished the, the, and, and was verified by the fact that the Father raised him from the dead and welcomed him to be seated on the, at, in, by a majesty on high in the throne of heaven. I'm going to say it that way. God then turned to Jesus in Hebrews 1.8 and said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. God the Father called Jesus God. That's pretty amazing, right? Had Jesus failed to redeem us and to accomplish what he set out to do, he never would have been resurrected. So when you're thinking, man, I don't know if God's going to forgive me this time. Well, you got to think that God the Father would never have resurrected Jesus from the dead had, uh, if it wasn't possible for you to be forgiven. In other words, what I'm saying, there's no room for condemnation and guilt in your life. There's no reason to feel like you're a perimeter person or an outsider. You don't have to feel that way because you're made near by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Jesus would have remained hell's prisoner if what he was doing didn't work. Wow. And he would have never sat on the throne in heaven if it didn't work. He never would have been resurrected. The resurrection of Jesus and him being seated at the right hand of God, our heavenly father in heaven, showed the Father's acceptance, his approval, his endorsement of what the redemptive work of Jesus accomplished for everyone that believes. And so the mission of Jesus, I'm going to say it this way, maybe, was to, to redeem us from our union with Satan, number one. Number two, impart the life of God in us, the zoe, the eternal life of God in us. Number three, present us holy. Number four, and unblameable. And number five, unreprovable to the Father, according to Colossians 1.22. Colossians 1.22 gives us a dramatic and freeing picture of how the Father views us now in Christ. No more condemnation. No more fear of not being acceptable. No more feeling like we're a perimeter person. No more condemnation at all. The, the Old Testament church people in the wilderness that had blood sacrifices of animals, they had a sin consciousness. Hebrews uh, 10, 2, I think it is. And so what Jesus came to do is remove the sin consciousness from us and give us a God inside minded consciousness. If I can say it that way. In Christ Christ. God sees the believer, the new creation, you, without blame and free from accu uh, accusations or ac free from being accused. The NIV says something like that. Faultless and innocent, the, the CEV says. Holy and pure and faultless, the Good News Bible says. Holy and blameless, the New Living Testament says. And unblameable and unreprovable, the King James says, nine different words from five different translations that I have in front of me that I'm reading from tell you that Satan has no grounds to charge you with anything. You, God predestinated us, Romans 8, 29, that, to be conformed into the image of his dear son, it says, that he, that is Jesus, might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Jesus is the firstborn son of God. You and I might be in the millions, but God the Father loves us with the same love that he loves 
Jesus and loved Jesus while Jesus was on the earth. John chapter 17, you can read that. And so God predestinated us to be conformed. That is, have conformed means have the same form as another. To be just like Jesus in our character, in our right standing with the Father. Not that we know it all, not that we're all powerful, not that we're everywhere present equally, okay? God was so pleased with his son Jesus that he wanted all of his future sons and daughters to be just like him in character, in nature, in love, in authority. Wow. Now today, Jesus is the head of the body, made up of his people. That is his church. In fact, I have the Living Bible here. Let me see what it says. Colossians 1.18, the Living Bible. Now today, it says, he, he, Jesus, is the head of the body made up of his people, that is his church, which he began, and he is the leader of all those who arise from the dead. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you arose from the dead. The old you died, and a new you came to pass. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And so you don't have to live with guilt and shame, any of that stuff. It doesn't matter. I mean, it, it, it matters as far as you got hurt before how people did you wrong. Maybe you were molested. Maybe you came out of a, a, a lot of sin and stuff like that. And that hurt you and all that kind of stuff. But now that you're in Christ, God never thinks of that anymore. And he doesn't want you to think of that anymore. He wants you to think, hey, I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. I'm a king's kid. God is for me. I've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And no weapon formed against me can prosper. Praise God. Whatever I put my hand to is going to prosper because God is with me. God is for me. God is my defense. I can't go under for going over. He's making a way where there is no way for me. You got to think that kind of thoughts and you can only do that by putting the mighty word of God in you big time. The Bible says in uh, Hebrews 2 11, it says, and we have been made holy by Jesus. Now we have the same father he has. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call us his brothers and sisters, the living Bible. Saints, I love you. Speak blessings to you in Jesus' mighty name. Go forth and steamroller that dirty dog, the devil, with the mighty word of God. Have a great day. Thank you, Pastor Glenn. Pastor Glenn's daily podcast is available on Spotify, his Pillars of Faith Christian app, and YouTube. I encourage you to support Pastor Glenn by listening to his podcast daily and watching his Bible teachings on YouTube. By sharing his content and increasing his viewership, we can get the gospel of Jesus Christ to more people across the globe. Let's encourage our friends and family to get inspired by God's Word with Pastor Glenn's teachings.